Dealing with anger. Hi, my name is Ed Riggins, but most people just call me Riggo. Welcome back to Thoughts for Thursday in this second video of my four video Thoughts for Thursday series about dealing with emotions. My thanks to physician John Sarno, psychologist Aaron Olivo, and author Carla McLaren. These experts have helped me to make a connection between ROI and my own understanding of my own emotions. Now let's talk about anger. Anger has been passed down to us over these last 200,000 years or so because it helps us protect ourselves and our resources. It's our body's signal that we need to establish a boundary, either physically or emotionally. Anger is the natural aggressiveness that kicks in when we feel we've been violated in some way. The power differential that we often perceive between ourselves and those who we feel are trying to violate us can really complicate how we respond when we feel anger. One of the most helpful things I learned when I took one of Harvard's negotiating programs several years ago was that in almost all conflict situations, there's a natural tension between empathy and assertiveness. Just the discovery that this tension naturally exists is an aspect of the negotiating process was oddly liberating. It helped me to eliminate the idea that something had gone terribly wrong. Once I began to notice that it was anger I was experiencing, I could then choose my response. Should I choose empathy and try to understand why the other person is doing what they're doing? Or should I choose aggressiveness and express my own needs? Emotions are typically accompanied by physiological and behavioral changes in our bodies. We have to get out of our head and direct our awareness downward to our bodies to get what our emotions are trying to tell us. So where does anger show up in our bodies? Often anger shows up as tension in our back. I remember so clearly how tight my back got when I was frustrated one time over senseless delays by a client during one of my assignments. I had a strong desire to assert myself, but it was in my interest to instead display empathy for the members of the team who were just trying to do their job. I forgot my frustration when I collected the six-figure fee that showed up a few months later. It's not always worth it, but sometimes you have to give up what you want right now to get what you want. We need, a good, we need a good emotional vocabulary. Studies show that if you simply have more words for your emotions, you can learn to regulate them better. So here are some words that can sometimes be simply different names for the emotion of anger. Apathy, shame, hurt, and frustration. See you next week when we'll talk about the emotion of sadness. Last week's first video in this series was about dealing with fear, and there's a link in today's email template if you missed it. Thanks for joining me. Doors closed.